Hi, uh, my name is Amir Salafur. I'm with the Nutrient Management Sphere program at Cornell University. And today, my presentation is nitrous oxide emission in nitrogen versus phosphorus-based uh, management of corn. Well, dairy farmers uh, often apply manure based on the nitrogen needs of the crop. Basically, uh, when manure is applied based on the nitrogen needs, it, it accumulates, basically accumulates phosphorus and potassium in the soil as the crop removal is, is not the same as nitrogen. So over a long term, you're, you're, you're end, ending with the uh, phosphorus runoff risks and high gate forages risks. One, one sp uh, possible alternative is to, to avoid this PNK accumulation is to shift from N-based manure management to P-based manure management with immediate incorporation to conserve nitrogen from basically reducing ammonia losses and provide that for the crop nitrogen uptake. So basically here, uh, we are thinking, okay, how this management and shift from N-base to B-base can impact corn grain yield and how, how it will impact soil nitrous oxide emission. So we conducted a field experiment. Basically, it, this study first initiated in 2001 in Musgrave Research Farm in, in Aurora, New York. And this year's results are basically the four, results of the 14th year of the study. And we are now in the 15th year of the study, which I'm not presenting any results from. So the experiment design is a randomized complete, complete plug design with, with uh, five replications. We had two red sub uh, composed dairy solids, uh, two, uh, which are 15 and 40 tons per acre. We had two red sub uh, liquid dairy manure, which are 10,000 gallons and 17,000 gallons per acre. The lower rates represent the P-based management and higher rates represent the uh, end based management. And we had two, uh, we basically had uh, six inorganic citrus rates, which, of which we chose zero and 100 pounds and per acre uh, based, on, based on the Merrin curve and calculations. Uh, that's it. That 100 one is, is the recommended nitrogen rate in our study. We use a closed chamber method, as you can see in figure 2A. And we basically sampled at four times. Each, each time that we went, we had a 0, 15, 30, and 45 minutes intervals. And at each round that we, we went to take gas samples, we monitored the, uh, the soil moisture and soil temperature. And Overall, we, we collected 34 gas sampling rounds for emissions uh, from April to October. The, we use a GC to analyze nitrous oxide, carbon dioxide, and methane emissions. And basically, we calculated nitrous oxide fluxes by, based, on a li based on linear regressions between uh, time and emitted nitrous oxide. If you're looking, if you're going to look at the results uh, in Figure Three, you can see a train, trend of nitrous oxide emission during the growing season. Um, you can see that emissions were very low uh, in, in the baseline, and if you go forward after manure application, you can see a peak, peak of nitrous oxide emission, and then when we had a lot of rainfall, we saw another peak of emission, and we saw a lot of continu continuous and consecutive lower uh, nitrous oxide emission after, after uh, side dressing nitrogen. And at the end of the season, again, we saw basically very low or no nitrous oxide emissions. So basically, the peak that, that basically we observed 
in July was was due to major rainfall events. Basically, rainfall uh, provides uh, anaerobic conditions, and where nitrate is available is is a perfect combination for a basically uh, denitrification, with it, which is the ma major pathway for nitrous oxide emission. Uh, in, in, in figure four, I'm going to focus and zoom in these, these basically three uh, sections and then we'll look at the treatment differences there. If you look at the figure four, uh, A, it's, it's the nitrous, nitrous oxide emission at 10 days after mineral application interval. And you can, you can see that the, the, within sources there are no differences, but, but the trend is toward, toward a nitrogen-based management having higher emissions than, than phosphorus-based. So if you, go, if you look at the basically treatment differences at major rainfall events here, at uh, figure 4C, B, and uh, you can see that uh, lower emission in compost compared with manure, with very with low emissions in inorganic end treatments. There were no differences between P-based manure and N-based manure. And basically, if if, you ha if I had a, a nitrate trends, I could show you that the nitrate in the soil in P-based manure was was high. Uh, and basically that, that was the reason that with, with rainfall uh, it, it basically emitted nitrous oxide emission almost the same as end based management which could be, the, which could be uh, basically due to uh, reducing ammonia volatilization that we, we were shooting for by tillage incorporation. If you look at the nitrous oxide emission after the side dressing in basically figure 4C, you can see that the, the emissions were very low in, in organic treatments and in zero end control, but we had a very huge uh, nitrous oxide emission in our 100 pounds nitrogen per acre. So, if, so we decided to look at the corn grain yield versus nitrous oxide emissions and we found a linear relationship between corn grain yield and nitrous oxide emissions. I should emphasize that this is a one year data, these are preliminary data and we, we don't want to draw any conclusion based on one year data but this is what we've seen so far and uh, basically this suggests that for each bushel of grain yield gain, you're going to have nitrous oxide loss or emission. So if you want to have a drug preliminary conclusion, uh, a shift from N-based to P-based compost resulted in basically 3% yield loss, but you ended up reducing nitrous oxide emission by 43%. Shifting from N-based to P-based manure resulted in 4 to 5% yield loss, but you end up saving, uh, reducing nitrous oxide emission by 29%. And, and basically the yield loss from 100 pounds to zero was, was very huge. So basically, obviously no farmers would like to do that or, or is, uh, we want the, farm, uh, the farming system to be profitable. So it's not an option at all. And, but very important thing is that nitrogen losses the nitrous oxide emissions are very small agronomically, but perhaps there are things to consider in, in an environmental perspective. So with that, I would like to acknowledge our source of fundings and sustainable dairy and federal formula funds. Thank you.